Five years after the eruption of the Nevado Sabancaya on September of 1995, anthropologist Johann Reinhardt and his partner Miguel Zarate climbed Mount Ampato. After hours and hours of intense climbing, the men encountered a frozen mummy in the fetal position, wrapped in colorful textiles made of alpaca wool. In addition, pottery shards, bones from llamas, and kernels were found to surround her. After examining the body, Reinhard hypothesized that Incan priests had sacrificed her as part of a ritual to the mountain gods. This shocked Reinhard. After bringing the mummy down from the mountain, Reinhard and Zarat took her to La Universidad Católica de Santa Maria, the Catholic University of the Virgin Mary in Arequipa, where DNA forensic identification was used. Analysis of the ice maiden's DNA offers a wonderful opportunity for understanding her genetic origin. If we could extract mitochondrial DNA from the ice maiden's tissue and successfully amplify and sequence it, then we could begin to trace her maternal line of descent and possibly locate past and current relevance. What assisted forensic scientists in the investigating the cause of the death of a young woman was the fact that the mummy had been thrown frozen as opposed to being dry. What this meant was that the mummy's DNA had been properly preserved. After tissue samples were taken to the Institute of Genomic Research in Rocksville, Maryland, the mitochondrial DNA in the samples was copied using PCR, polymerase chain reaction. In old tissues or tissues that might be degraded, mitochondrial DNA is often easier to study than nuclear DNA because cells contain many more copies of mitochondrial DNA than nuclear DNA. The mitochondrial DNA extracted from the ice maiden was of excellent quality. Mitochondrial DNA can be divided into two major regions. The first region codes for the genes that make the molecular products used by mitochondria, also known as subcellular organelles to scientists. The second region is a non-coding region and does not contain any genes nor valuable information. Mitochondrial DNA analysis was used to determine the ancestry of the mummy and determine the possible age as well. The mummy found to have shared ancestry with both Native Americans and the Gnoll people of Panama. Taken from the evidence, the mummy was determined to be from a teenage girl, probably between the ages of 12 and 14 years of age. Comparisons of the sequence of the ice man's mitochondrial DNA from HV1 showed four differences from a reference sequence. While searching through databases of sequences of HV1, researchers found that these four differences exactly matched those differences found in a group of Native Americans. These people belong to a group called Haploid A, and they are one of the four funding lineages of Native Americans. The HV2 sequence of mitochondrial DNA from the ice maiden varied in eight nucleotides from a reference sequence. These variations do not match any sequences found in a database of HV2 sequences. The closest match was from a group of people called Gob, who lived in Panama. With the help and understanding of funny mitochondrial DNA, the forensics identification team was able to estimate the time of death, ranging anywhere from 1450 to 1480s. Keep in mind that the identification and study of Juanita would not have been possible if her lungs, livers, and muscle tissues were not preserved. Also, not only did Juanita offer new insights on Inca health, but more on her nutrition during the reign of the Sapa Inca Pachacuti. With that in mind, the Human Genome Project was created in order to find a connection with Juanita to possible living relatives. Scientists have compiled samples of blood of every nation on Earth, allocating the groups of DNA geographically. According to that world sample, the human race descended from the trees of Northeast Africa and spread through all the corners of the world. Now, back with Juanita, the body had caused a sensation in the scientific world due to its well-preserved condition. Between May and June of 1996, 
It was exhibited in the headquarters of the National Geographic Society in Washington, D.C., a special conservative slash display unit engineered by the Carrier Corporation. When I decided to climb the Ponto, it was really to get some nice shots of the adjacent erupting volcano of Salakaya. I never thought there'd be anything up there because it was permanently snow covered. But the volcanic ash from Mount Sabakaya had drifted onto a pot. A layer of dark soot helps to melt the snow cap, exposing a mysterious cloth wrapped bundle. I asked my friend to stand by the mummy bundle because this would help for scale for photos. And then uh, I thought it might be better if the mummy was moved slightly. And when he did it, all of a sudden, we were both startled and looking into the face of this Inca child. He said he was having real trouble even lifting it at all. And I thought maybe it was still stuck to the ice. Turned out it wasn't. It weighed over 100 pounds. The weight tells Reinhardt that this is a unique find. With the exception of her face, which has been exposed to the sun, this is a frozen mummy that has not dried out. It's been five years since Cortal's last saw the Doncella. And I can see already that the Doncella has grown a little bit more saggy than she used to be. Take a sample of the Doncella's 500-year-old hair. Hey, look. This, this is a, a white hair. Look, 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 she had white hair. It's, 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 that's, that's the Doncella's hair. This is very unusual for a 15-year-old to, to have gray or white hair. Some young people do have white hair at a very early age, but it can also be due to stress. So with that in mind, DNA identification played a big role in learning about the unknown, mysterious Indian culture that Momia Juanita has brought for forensic. Not only has Juanita opened up the door opportunity for forensic scientists, but has taught us much about her culture, diet, and ways of life before ours. She has taught us much, and for that, we thank Juanita.